There are many reasons why you might want to work on a drawing or painting in layers. Let's open Painter's Layers panel. We see that we have no layers at the moment. We just have a blank canvas. I'm going to show you various kinds of layers and ways to make them and manage them. But let's open a couple of custom palettes first. We already used basic drawing. Let's work with that. And I'll also open Layers Demo, which is a custom palette that I made specifically to show you some special kinds of layers that have to do with categories in the brush selector. Coarse Bristle is a liquid ink variant. And liquid ink that you can see here, if you scroll up and down, hover up and down, you'll see what some of those strokes look like. This is a very special kind of a category. As soon as I made a stroke, a new layer was automatically created that is devoted to liquid ink strokes. And its icon has a little black layer at the top. I'm going to choose now a watercolor variant. This is Grainy Wash Camel. And switch to green. When I make a watercolor stroke, I automatically get a watercolor layer, and that has a blue icon. Every other kind of layer for every other category of drawing and painting tools will occupy an ordinary or an image layer. You can make a new image layer in a number of ways. One way is to cut and paste a selection. Let's make a selection with the lasso tool here. And let's fill it with a gradient. I'm thinking that gradient looks interesting. Let's go to the paint bucket and fill with gradient. There it is. If I simply use the Edit Cut command, which is also Keyboard Command or Control X, it's gone, but it's waiting in the paste buffer. So I'll simply do a Command or Control V, and now it has become an ordinary image layer. I can use the Layer Adjuster to move it around, to distort it or scale it in some way. I'll use the Transform commands to show you that you can scale it with or without maintaining the proportion. You can rotate it. And you can use skew, distort, and perspective transformations as well. If you want to commit to the transformation, use this check icon. If you want to cancel it, click on the X, which is what I'll do. At this point, I think I'd like to simply delete the current layers. I'll delete this one and that one, and also the liquid ink layer. So we're back to our blank canvas. I will also dismiss the Layers Demo custom palette. Another way to create a layer is to use the media library called Images. This panel has a number of images that are provided by Painter, but you can also create your own and add them to a portfolio or make new portfolios. If I double click on one of those items, I can find it as a new layer which is named for whatever the item might be. Let's make another one. Let's do the leaf. It always lands in the upper left, but you can move it around with the Layer Adjuster tool. And you can change the stacking order. And you can also change the relationship between the two items using a very powerful list of composite methods. Let's say hard light. Let's say difference. So, ooh, that's fun. Let's move that around a little bit. So this is yet another way of creating layers from these little images. I'll dismiss the marble or delete it, and the same with the leaf. And I'll also close the selection portfolio. Now I'm going to open a couple of photos that I will find using the open command in my working files folder. California poppies and pink flowers. If I simply use the command or control, I can open them both at the same time. We can see that they are two different shapes and sizes. Not a problem. I'm going to add the California poppies to the flowers pink as a layer. So I will do a select all, command or control A, plus the copy command, 
could have been the cut command, but then that would have eliminated it from the original. And I'll dismiss this California poppies without saving it. Now I will paste using Command or Control V, and I do have the combination now. As you can see, I have layer one. If I wanted to name this something other than the generic, I can do that by simply typing in that field. If you have several layers, it might be handy to name them so you can more easily find your way to the one you want to work with. I will use the Layer Adjuster Transform command and simply stretch vertically and squeeze horizontally so that they match up. And I will commit to that transformation. I will also explore a couple of composite methods. Gel, kind of too dark. Let's look at soft light. Oh, well, that doesn't give us nearly enough of California poppies. Let's look at darken. Now that is too much of California poppies. I'll try hard light. That's just about right. If I wanted to, I could adjust the opacity of any given layer. And I think maybe 75 or so will work nicely for this. And so I can, if I wish, save this in RIF format. So let's do that. Let's do a save as. And if I want to maintain the layers as separate, I will use the RIF command and save it to wherever I want it to be, possibly on my desktop. But then if I want to have a composite where I drop the layer, now it is part of the canvas, no longer in layer form, and I can now save it as any other format. I can save it as a JPEG or whatever else is preferable. So this is your introduction to layers. You'll be using them in future movies.